Now let the continuation of Cinema Royale begin. Um, uh, another theme I recognized in these giant monster films is that uh, they're in slumber and hibernation. They get awoken all of a sudden and they start attacking. That's a common theme I recognized. It's not really a theme more, more or less as a cliche, I think. Uh, yeah, maybe a cliche more than a theme. Yeah, that's what I'm... But the... Um, there's not a lot of dragon movies out there. You know, I'm surprised. All the talk about crocodiles, you didn't bring up Lake Placid. Yeah, that's the... Mm, pass. Yeah, I... Really? Uh, what I'll say about Lake Placid is, um... The first film was Just fine. the first one. Just, just, the, just the first one. The first, just, one, just the first one. the first one was Everything fine. Else, no. The fine was... The first film was fine. The, the first the other one. The other sequels, not worth it. And... Yeah, I... In um, shameful sequels, Mike Mike Javis ex- totally talked about all those sequels, and they're worth a watch because those sequels are bad, and it's like, ugh. I say, first movie, say no to the rest. Exactly. Just watch Lake Plaza because it's actually really good. Yeah, I mean, it's got Betty White. Uh, yeah, it's got Betty White in it. <laughs> if this is a dick, this is where I tell you to suck it. <laughs> Um, but there's this one film I saw. It involves dragons. Dragons. Came out in 2002. Stars... I know what it is. It's... St- too. It's, oh, I think I know too, yeah. It's, it stars uh, Christian Bale, uh, Matthew McConaughey, and Gerard Butler. Rain of Fire. Rain of Fire. Fire, okay, no, that fire, ain't I was thinking fire. of. Oh my god, this film is uh, awesome and actually quite familiar, actually. Um, so, apparently, these dra- um, this is set in the post-apocalyptic future. Uh, apparently, in 2010, they found a dragon and it's awoken. Uh, ten years later, 2020, they have this big resistance against the dragons because there's they're overpopulating the earth and they have to get rid of these dragons as they're trying to distinguish but the the best thing about the backstory of the dragons is that apparently according to this film the dragons are these lost species that kill the dinosaurs burn them to ashes wonder i miss this one whoa <laughs> it blew my mind i was like are you serious? Dragons killing the dinosaurs? And then after they kill the dinosaurs, they just go back into slumber until the Earth repopulates and start all over again. Um, so, basically the whole film is pretty much uh, Matthew McConaughey, Christian Bale, Gerard Butler trying to fight against these dragons. And most of them are females. And there's only one male. They're trying to repopulate, and they have to kill the male first. Why doesn't that sound familiar? Hmm. Sound familiar. Repopulating male and female. Recently. One male, bunch of females. No. Oh, recently. Oh. Recently. You know, one male, one female... Trying to repopulate, lovey dovey, in a Adam way. Eve. No. Oh. You guys haven't really figured oh. that out. Oh. Oh. No, I know what it is. I know what it is. Don't worry. Really, you know? I yeah. think I have a grass, but um, play on. Here's a clue. The here's the clue. The main title is not it. <laughs> exactly. The main title is not the is not the. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll elaborate on that when we go into that film. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll, because my mom, uh, we watched that film together, and oh, we, uh, oh, 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 yes. And that's the first you're... thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. catching on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Arena Fire is actually a pretty good dragon-centered giant monster film. I mean, it blew my mind. I was like, where does this movie been all my life? I mean, I love dragons, and you get the three upcoming stars of 
Matthew McConaughey, uh, Christian Bale before Batman, and Gerard, Gerard Butler before after Gladiator. But before three hundred. Yes. Yep. Up before three hundred. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, uh, so, I think it's time to no, add. I just, oh, okay. <laughs> you want to add in something? Well, there is one more um, movie that I just discovered that would kind of technically uh, be considered into the um, like a uh, awoken kind of do- ordeal because I just found it. Yeah, yeah I, I just found it on the list. It's actually a, a movie that I really did like. It's um, Troll Hunter. Uh, Troll oh, Hunter. Oh, I heard of that one. Yeah, yeah. Troll oh, Hunter is okay. pretty much a found footage film, but for the first time, like this is a rarity. This is not a horror film. Mm-hmm. This is pretty much a found a found footage where a bunch of teens have apparently discovered this guy, and he has this secret or like he's working like in a secret to fight off trolls. And apparently, like the like these are actual trolls that like they live under bridges and they got big noses and stuff like that, and it really is a, a take an a really is a really is an interesting take on it, because you got these troll hunters and you got all these different kinds of like they show you all these different kinds of trolls like three headed trolls or like ones that live under the bridge or like on the mountains and stuff like that, and often like the way they would cover <clears throat> they would like hide it is that instead of trolls it's like oh no 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 these were bears <laughs> and um you know and even like spoiler alert there was um the finale is pretty much they have to fight this giant troll that's literally the size of a mountain and like this is the one where the hunter has been looking for for years and it's really well paced the special effects are absolutely amazing like the trolls look really realistic and just everything is like it's really it's just a really awesome film like they look like real trolls exactly (laughs) (laughs) um yeah i I heard about troll hunter it's actually isn't it like a remake um i think it's i I read it was a remake of another similar i don't maybe 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 i'm wrong no, right. I don't, okay, it maybe I'm say wrong. Anything. Okay, maybe I'm it wrong. It didn't say anything about a, another um, troll. I could be wrong. So, you guys have any other giant monster films miscellaneous you want to talk about? I was gonna. Well, I was gonna mention. I was gonna mention uh, Tremors, but I think we're running a little bit low on time. Uh, um. Uh, uh, the, uh, the other, uh, uh, the other giant monsters we almost forgot, uh, when we say dinosaurs, we forgot to mention a few great movies, like, um, um, uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park, Jurassic uh, Park the, Lost of course. World, the Lost World, which I, I thought was pretty good, that, now those encapsulate, uh, the oh, three major themes. Sorry, that was me. Sorry. Ow. And the round is up. <laughs> I think I put that a little too close into the uh, microphone. So. Oh, now you tell me. <laughs> it had a... Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. To okay. be honest, I did not expect that. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you can uh... fix that in post. <laughs> keep it in you keep it in <laughs> I don't know maybe I will I don't know we'll see okay. anyways James sorry anyway yeah go on Jurassic, James Jurassic Farm uh, Jurassic Farm uh, <laughs> Farm Parmesan Jurassic Parmigiano <laughs> Jurassic Farm is frightening in the dark. In the dark. Roman riding wild. <laughs> okay, oh, Jurassic okay. Park is. Oh, look at this. Look at this babush. Cause the bee farm is over there. Great matzo buzz in the evening. <laughs> oh, well grounded with spaghetti sauce. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Enough. Okay. Let James talk. 
Let him talk. <laughs> it's your spotlight. Go. It encapsulates the three the three things that make or break your monster movie. It has it has the point. It has the heart. It has the craft. It has everything as to what makes a, a good, solid monster film. Jurassic Park 2, The Lost World, has some heart, some point, some still a pretty solid craft. And has a lot uh, of smell. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen the films that followed, but... Um, uh, then, then we come to uh, a, a more recent film that uh, that sort of uh, defies the logic a little bit, <laughs> and uh, yes, you guys know where I'm going with this. Okay. <clears throat> Walking with Dinosaurs 3D. Oh, no. Yep, yep, it had to come. I knew it was coming. I knew it. We had to put it. We have to put it. Yeah, we got to talk about it. Especially the... uh, um, (laughs) So, um... Uh... Uh... So, James and Morgan, um... James was asking me, you want to see The Walking with Dinosaurs? And... I was like, uh, uh, I got something to do, and wait, and I was like, wait a minute, are you doing the Cretaceous cut, which is the shut up the shut the fuck up edition? So mm-hmm. He's like, he's like, yes. It's like, I say, good luck with that. Bye. And here is here is where I'm going to have to to <laughs> swallow my pride and kill this thing for good. Um. When I, uh, my biggest curiosity with this film was the same thing that I think most everyone was thinking when they saw the first trailer for the film, is this going to be silent? And, uh, so my idea was once the, the following trailers came out and it was slowly revealed that it was going to be less and less uh, of a silent film and more of a more of a talking dinosaurs a la Milo and Otis Homeward Bound type film uh, with no lip movement I said to myself you know, maybe Maybe I'll watch it if they just have a silent pep with all the voices taken out. Morgan's midnight snack, everyone. Morgan, uh, you, you're kind of hungry. Mm-hmm. Weird things It um, it's because I'm talking about walking with dinosaurs. Exactly. Uh, and Thank now you. after, Sad. and now after having seen the silent cut of the movie, we can both decree for very good reason that there was just no saving this. None. None whatsoever. Uh, for starters, uh, news. I, mouth. I, I can only I can only uh, decree from this that I was wrong that it was meant to be a talking flick from the begin from the beginning just because of how it's of of how the scenes are planned out and how it's all edited. What are you looking at? Me? Yes. Oh, I, it's okay. No, 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 you just those, you just magazine. keep on going. I'll go next. You just just keep on going with what you have to say about it. I mean, well, there's just so many things I have to cover. Well, for example, the the uh, the story you can very much piece it together. You can very much piece it together what's going on, but the problem is some of the rather visual gags. What? 
Morgan's a little itchy. It's my um bad movie back scratcher. Just sorry. Just Go on. Just calm down. At, at one point sorry. and maybe maybe you can fill in the blank here for me, Matt, because you saw you saw the the theatrical cut of the film. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. There's there's one part where they're getting washed down the, the river yes. and for some yeah. reason it, it rewinds and then plays it back. Oh yes. Yep, uh, yep. Could you? What was there something going on in the dialogue no. that we missed? Yeah, that actually was. The thing is, is that because they were kind of like doing a fourth wall joke with it, because the narrator throughout the whole time was that black chicken, by, uh, voiced by John Leguizamo, and he was like, "I was like, dude, what the hell is going on?" It's like I was just. It was like, uh, I was just going in a heroic side. This is a heroic side? No, 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 no. Back that footage up. Let's see. Is that really a heroic side? Oh, yeah. That's what you call a heroic side? No, no. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Oh, God. That, that, was that the just thing. sounds was annoying. Just... Oh, God. <laughs> okay, dude. Try freaking 90 minutes of that whole crap. <laughs> well, go on. Go on. I'll, okay. I'll do, I'll do my take later. Okay. Um, there comes a part also where, where they stop and talk about the statistics of the Gorgosaurus. Um, of course we can't hear them talking about the statistics of a, of a Gorgosaurus because we're watching the silent cut, but we're oh, getting introduced oh. to an x-ray and then, uh, okay, and then, yeah. uh. Okay, just, just out of curiosity, James, is there one of the, like, descriptions that suddenly go back to the arms, like, all the time? Yeah. Yes. That uh, the camera zooms into the arms and zooms out, and we're kind of like, "What? Yeah. What's going on here? That Why was are we... actually because of the. That was another joke. That was mm-hmm. another joke because they were describing the whole time. It's like this is a fierce creature, but oh, oh my god, what are these little arms? Anyways, I was like, he has ferocious teeth, but look at these tiny little things. I did not know what was going on there. Thank you for filling that in. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Oh, okay. But, and yeah. now, let's let in the let's add in the final molestation. Okay. okay. What is it? The good. The good thing that I can say about this, somewhat, is that uh, is that I think that they did a rather decent job of of putting dinosaurs in a real atmosphere and trying to make it look natural. Uh, the problem is I can still, I can still follow the story without the sound. Roughly. I can just, God, Morgan, what? (laughs) Morgan. I'm guessing he did not enjoy that. More. He did not oh enjoy the Cretaceous cut. Hey, should we, should we call somebody? Come I straight and commit suicide here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Call the uh, uh, call, call uh, one. Uh, Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. Call a new uh, Morgan. We should probably call a new host. Morgan. Mm-hmm. Hey, I want to get a really pretty co-host. If you don't do that, <laughs> we're gonna get a hot chick to replace you. And then we'll spike the re- the views with the hot chick. The world needs an underage reviewer. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. yes. Wise choice. The the final insult is the is the story of the film. Every they could have had something magnificent here, mm-hmm. and they and they have some, they have a story that's being told. In. Uh, uh, in silence, which is, which is quite possible. However, if you want a silent, if you want a good story that's told silently, watch the triplets of Belleville. Uh, do not watch the Cretaceous cut of this film because it doesn't even have a good story. It just, it just does not. It's every cliche in the book thrown, thrown in there. It's, uh, it's the circle of life. Bambi's mom getting killed off. It's it's uh it's met the met the cute girl, fell in love at first sight. It's 
It's fought with the other guy to get the girl for for whatever reason because they're an a hole. Um, uh, it's annoying sidekick. Um, Matt, do you got something to fill in there? Yeah. You know, like I just thought of it now, like because I thought like like the story it would have been magnificent. Like I just re- I just realized right now is like yeah, the plot isn't really that original. Come to think of it. I guess I would, I, like, it would have been awesome the way it was told, I guess. But, yeah, come to think of it, the story really is pretty cliched. <laughs> I just realized, I was like, oh. I mean, we were just bored. We were just bored watching this. Okay, now, I guess now is the time that I could come in. You know, ever since yes. I saw, okay, ever since I saw the first trailer of it, I thought it was going to be something that's ridiculously awesome. I thought this was going to be like a new revolution. Like this could be a revolutionary thing. This like back then, this was when like I was in like the rut of 2013 where like all the bad films kept coming out. And, you know, and when I saw this, I was really intrigued. But then suddenly I went to actually see it. Holy crap. It was... I've never been in a screening that is it, that has been this tedious. That's so, like... It annoys me so bad. So painful with the choices and the dialogue and almost everything that they do. Like, the only other one that I could think of was pretty much... You guys listening? What are you guys... Yeah, I'm listening. Keep going. Go, go on, we're listening. Okay, anyways. Like, the only other film that I know that, like, really annoyed me that much was just, it was, uh, like, in theaters was Cloudy 2. But anyways, with Walking with Dinosaurs, mm-hmm. it just annoyed the living hell out of me because literally the characters cannot freaking stop talking every single time. 90 minutes of agonizing... Like, it's like ears coming out, and it's only from four freaking actors. Like, two of which is freaking Sid from Ice Age and Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks, Justin Long. You know, and, like, they just couldn't stop. They literally filled the entire thing. And I wanted to burst my head. And it was, it was literally so bad that even... This is one of the very few films that even me and Mr. Code actually agree upon that it's an annoying piece of crap. And that's very rare when that happens. And now hearing the mm. fact, like, you know, when I first heard about the Cretaceous Kite, I was actually pretty excited about it because finally they actually, you know, they, they listened to me. They actually made a Shut Up edition. You know, I was excited. But now hearing the fact they did jack all to it, all they did was literally remove the audio? No, 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 no. That couldn't, that, you shouldn't just do that. There's a lot of re-editing you have to do in order to fix it because it's obvious the parts where they re-edit to make it, like, kid-friendly, to do it for the kids, like the uh, description of the dinosaurs or, like, that weird rewind thing and all that so literally the only thing I could say you bastards you literally destroyed something that could have been great I mean these were probably the best the best animation I've seen in 2013 probably even more than Frozen and literally thank you And it could have been, you know, like, it could have been told, like, you know, the story is pretty cliche, but it could have been, it could have been told in a way that would be, that would be so innovative in a way that it's only, this would have been the film that Steven Spielberg or Disney wanted to do with The Land Before Time and Dinosaur, you know, just making a silent film just about dinosaur, just about like dinosaurs and the way they are. But no, that's wasted away with this bullcrap. 
is freaking wasted. And even with the Cretaceous cut, they wasted it. Mm -hmm. You bastards. That's all I could say. You bastards. You vicious, heartless bastards. Look what you've done to all of them. Well, thank God that is over. Yes. Uh, yes. You. Oh my God. We have killed the pig. Morgan. He, yeah. You have a sock in your mouth. Has um. So all right, let me ask you, Morgan. Um, has Matt pretty much? <laughs> Um, all right, no. all right, all right, all right. No. All right. Do you no. want to... <laughs> no. no. All this time, you... I have been holding out every ounce of my rage. More if, this, if there was a list... Yes, damn right, you're right. If this was a list of bad kids' films, Mars Needs Mums would be right up here. And somewhere, somewhere <laughs> right here would be goddamn walking with dinosaurs. <laughs> it's okay, maybe it's the way of the the render of the quality James sent me, but I didn't think the animation was that spectacular. When we see no, these it must be the rendition because probably, like here's my here's, here's my thing. When I was seeing these dinosaurs move in these fields in these areas all I just saw were creatures walking. I didn't see them interacting with the environment. I didn't see um, them going down on the land. All I just saw them was like trugging through some CGI sort of terrarium. It wasn't like the British documentary where they were combining CGI and animatronics, which was a very smart and clever idea because it can't be animatro it can't be CGI all the time. There has to be a bit of believability. There's a fine line between the sort of thing. And I think they also did that with uh, Disney's dinosaur. Also. Yes, yes, they did, but that was a greater extent. They had miniatures. They actually went on location. They had a variety of things. What does this movie give us? Forest. Forest. Forest, 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 forest. <laughs> a beach near a forest. A decayed forest. A burning down forest. A valley near a forest. A fucking area full of snow near a goddamn forest. It's like they're so cheap to make this movie. It's like, how much is it made for? You're shooting this in a goddamn forest. It's a dinosaur movie. There should be more than just a fucking forest. It's, it's, There's what, the Great the... Valley. That wasn't even a great valley. That was just a bunch of snow caps and a bunch of valley in between. And, good God, the story, it's more than just cliche. So, here's the message at the end of it. If your brother is a meat-headed jock... Where's he going? Come back here. Boy! You have every house to hear my rage, boy! Come back here, boy! Everybody has a book. I need to get one. Oh... <laughs> uh. Sorry, uh, that he's busy right now, I guess. Okay. Okay, fine. All right. Here's the one thing. <laughs> well, Debbie, even Debbie Where's has a book, so... Where's it going? The moral of this movie. If you have a brother who is an absolute asshole, if he does something bad and you save his life, reject him. No. Just, just no. Just, just, just no. No. And I'm in done. the end, you will get laid. Yep. <laughs> I'm done. <sighs> okay. There he is. Oh, there we are. How dare you leave us here rambling? Well, um, no, how, yeah, where how, have you been? How dare you leave us with a rambling idiot? Yeah, yes, you abandoned us in the middle of your podcast. <laughs> I had a bathroom pass, thank you very much. Okay. All right. I get a bathroom pass for each episode we do. Okay. Okay. 
Fine. So now, that's what I wanted to do, because I drank this mother... Mmm! All right, all right. I I, I drank this. I drank this way too early. Okay, that's why I I was holding to pee for God knows how long, and you guys <laughs> criticized me for leaving my own podcast. Mixtape. Mixtape. Ledger. Someone has knocked down the Amazing Spider-Man Two from being a high opening grocer. The world is safe. God damn! Now I made my fucking People magazine wet. <laughs> Somebody get Mike a newspaper. That's nothing. I was trying to eat Entertainment Weekly. So, so my People magazine got wet, especially on the page that I want to talk about. Is that for the um, next next portion, the end of this podcast. Yes. Yes. And yes. This, this might be the... Yes. And I will say this might be the longest episode in Cinema, history, cinema Royal history. Maybe. Well, what about I haven't Muppets? heard that before. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see in post. Nah. Nah, I'm sure I'm sure Muppets are longer. Alright, so we're at the conclusion and we gotta talk about the king of monsters. And the king of monsters is the glorious Godzilla. Really? Gojira. I thought it was Peter Jackson's King Kong. Or Gojira. As they say in the movies, Gojira. It, it's Gojira, you moron. <laughs> Thank you. They even correct. Nice lighter. Nice lighter. So, <laughs> with Godzilla, we all love Godzilla, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Matt, put the book down. Oh, oh. Sorry. We're not, we, we're not reading books now. We have. Excuse me? We got through the phase. Okay. Um. So, yeah. we love Godzilla. There's various reasons why we love Godzilla. Um, there's different eras of Godzilla films. There's like three eras of Japanese Godzilla films and two American reboots. Um, so I guess we can go around and say which one is our favorite Godzilla film and probably why. Hmm. Well, would you like to start with yourself or... I... I want to say Godzilla's revenge. <laughs> Godzilla says I should fight my own battles, you know. Oh, no, no. So, I, I ain't going to do that. I, I don't support Godzilla's son that's also goofy for some reason. He got so, better in the Sierra. Yeah, so let, yeah. let me start with myself as an example. Um, I love the Heisei Heisei era the that block of films is amazing you got um one of my favorites used to be godzilla versus space godzilla i i i love the death of it because the story of how uh godzilla's dna gets into space because of mantra and there's another kind of a rumor about how the DNA went to space, but it went into like this black hole or whatever and created space Godzilla, the evil doppelganger of Godzilla comes to earth, have, uh, um, shit happens. So I was like the evil doppelganger space Godzilla was pretty badass. The look of it was cool, but a film beat that. And all thanks to Morgan, mind you, Morgan sent me this film and I, I also seen reviews of this film as well, but I actually have the whole film on file so I can watch it over and over. And my favorite Godzilla film of the Heisei era is um, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> or, or if you want to go by the trailer's pronunciation, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Exactly. Or as yeah, or as you want, if you want to go by Morgan's. Uh... Yeah. Uh, translation: Godzilla versus Kinky Dora. <laughs> <laughs> it had Whoa. to be brought up. Oh it yeah, had yeah. To be brought oh, up. yeah, yeah. Kinky Dora. <laughs> yep. Oh man, that was a great. Well, show. he has three heads. I know, but uh, the thing with Godzilla. But versus... does he get three? 
<laughs> the thing, a thing about King, um, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, is um, it has all the elements that I like. It's got time travel. It's got mechanized robot element to it, and it's got epic monster fights in it. So, to summarize the story in in a nutshell. And, and, it, and it does retell the, the origin of Godzilla, which is pretty much during the World War II era. Godzilla, uh, Godzilla Saurus was on the island. Radiation, boom, Godzilla was born. This is so, a good story for you, Mr. Spielberg. And um, there's some. I, I'm not really used to Japanese movies, but there's a. I. I just skip forward to the most important part where they go back in time. Uh, fuck, what was the three creatures? There's three of these little fucking creatures. Thorax. Thank, thank you, thank you. And they go back in time, and they are left on the island, and um, there was something else that I'm forgetting, because um, they try to delete Godzilla from history. Sorry, Dorats. That's what it was, Dorats. Yeah. There's a couple of time travelers who are trying to remove Godzilla so that way it doesn't destroy Japan or something like that. And the H-bomb is being tested on that island, so they legitimately move the Godzilla Saurus to a different island. And then this radiation bomb occurs on the door rats, and it turns into King Ghidorah. Yep, and King Ghidorah is there instead of Godzilla doing all the chaos and stuff. And then, oh, there's more stuff that happens, more stuff happens, and all of a sudden... Uh, King Ghidorah's dead, they have to resurrect him, and they put a metal head in between, and it's Mecha. King Ghidorah. Mecha Ghidorah. Mecha King Ghidorah. Best idea ever. I mean, Mecha Godzilla has shit compared to this guy. Oh my god, it's awesome. I think I just, I just orgasm right now. Okay. <laughs> I. Do you need to change pants? I'm fine. I, I think there's, there's, uh, there's two sides of me that need to ex- explain what exactly works in this film. Yeah, you should go ahead because yeah. I can't, I can't explain it because I'm just, my, my eyes and my mouth are just like, in awe because it's so awesome. So I need to explain what, it more. What, uh, what, what makes it work? Not only go. Not we're we're going to have to to go back to the we're we're gonna go have to back to the thesis uh, having a point or heart to the film. Uh, the original Godzilla had a point and a heart, uh, and the craft for it was pretty good. Uh, when you have a movie like this, uh, as far off in the future as it is for a sequel. It actually still has a heart to it. Uh, I say this because the um, I say this because uh, one of the one of the men in the present is somebody uh, uh, who has a connection with Godzilla. He was there. He was there when uh, uh, when they came across the Godzilla Saurus on the island back in the forties, and he. His uh, uh, his his uh, army was rescued, uh, as it were, by the Godzilla Saurus, and he has a unique he he has thus formed a unique bond with that creature. Uh, he believes he believes that it acted on its own free will and uh, and protected them. Like it was, uh, like it was some sort of god that uh, manifested itself. Uh, in the end, though, he is also among those giving the orders to travel back in time and destroy Godzilla, or at least he's uh, he's he's among those giving aid to the said mission. And what it boils down to is in his. In the third act of the film, he encounters Godzilla. They have a, a moment together, and he flashes back to the time uh, to the time Godzilla saved his life. And you have to wonder 
what is the point of this? What is he thinking right now? Is he is he uh, is he thinking? Is he coming to the realization, perhaps, that that this is not uh, a conscious being, just a an uncontrollable force of nature? Or is he coming to the realization that um, that he's getting he's about to get what he deserves because he destroyed that which saved his life? Or any combination of those. And then all of a sudden... Boom! That's what he... Yeah, that's... It, it's a, a, a scene that is worth, worth a thousand words just to experience and interpret and think back on it and say... What are we trying to say here? Yeah. And that is the that is the heart that this movie has. And now I shall hand it over to the other part of me. Oh no. Oh dear. Wait. I know where this is going. Really? Uh -oh. Especially for this movie. <laughs> I thought he was so really. Godzilla, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, which really, really awesome. It had these big rubbery monster man, and then, and then, uh, God, Godzilla is like fighting this King Ghidorah, and it's three-headed dragon, and it's really, really cool. And so these people that go back in time, they try to God, stop Godzilla from ever, ever coming up, and then. And then they go back to the present, and they don't have Godzilla, but they got they got King Ghidorah. They got King Ghidorah instead. And so they say, "Oh, we gotta go, we gotta go get Godzilla." But then Godzilla, he ran into a nuclear submarine, and he comes up out of the ocean, and he's bigger and meaner than ever. Yes. And then we have a big monster brawl. We have a big monster brawl, and it is so cool. And they knock down. All the, all the buildings, and then Godzilla destroys King Ghidorah, but then they've got they've got a Godzilla running around the town, so they go back to the future to to bring King Ghidorah back in time, and they turn it into a robot, and it's, and it's really cool, because now they have they have the control of the of the, of the big monster, and it is and it that way they can destroy Godzilla and he is out of there. He he he's dead. What? Is that all? Is that all you have to say? Yeah. Uh, I think it's time to go. You need to go potty? I think it's time for you to go potty. You should go watch it again. Yeah. Okay, watch it again. Sorry. Seriously, James, what the hell is up with that kid? Does he have a home? And he's, uh, he's very excitable. You know, like, uh, his, his, he doesn't have a home. His parents let him watch rated R movies, so I, I oh. have him stay over here. Oh. Oh. The kids kind of sound like me sometimes, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Um, so um, let's go around and ask uh, what your favorite Godzilla movies. <clears throat> I guess with mine, like I'm a little bit like you guys. I do a pre I do really like the ones where Godzilla would go out against. Uh, King Ghidorah and stuff like that. But um, there is one that I do want to mention is pretty much um, what I think, like, um, some may say it's not really the best in terms of Godzilla films, but it, I think, like, as, you know, as an action and for the monsters and stuff like that, it really is a really awesome grand finale, which is Godzilla Final Wars. Um, Godzilla Final Wars is pretty much, this is, like, to commemorate the 50th, and technically, Toho's, I, I think it's Toho's final Godzilla film, pretty much. So what they did is, print, so what they essentially did 
is that they would bring literally everybody back, not only um, all the monsters back, but even all the uh, old actors. And often, even the actors have some really awesome scenes, but it really is all about Godzilla. Mm -hmm. So, and like you would see Godzilla go out against like every single one. Like, there's even one scene where like he's in, like, because, yes? Before, I think I know what you're going to talk about, but let me uh, talk about another film that features a creature in Final Wars. Mm-hmm. No, oh, no, I was about to say that. No, because yeah, I know what you Yeah, because I, I, I know you're going to say it. I was just, I just, I, I just really wanted to mention that um, the 98 uh, Godzilla remake yeah, by Roland Zilla. Emmerich. Zilla. I was going to say that Toho bought the rights to God, the Godzilla of 1980, mm-hmm. 1998, 1988, and named it Zilla because, you know, he's not Godzilla. So he's in Final Wars, and he's wrecking Sydney, Australia, and all of a sudden Godzilla comes by and beats the shit out of him. Yeah, and it only took like a few seconds. Exactly. Because- yeah. The funny thing about Zilla, sorry. The funny thing is about Zilla is that the next movie that came out after like uh after that 1998 Godzilla, they actually they actually had to have to make an entire scene where they explained that the Godzilla in New York that attacked New York City wasn't really the Godzilla. It was just like another one that they just call Zilla. Mhm. Yeah. So so it is interesting that how like Totally. They still accept it as like a part of the Godzilla thing, but not really as like yeah, the just Godzilla. like just like just like the the, the shrimpy little brother kind of thing. <laughs> it's like you, you, you got all the gang, sense. like you got all the gang, and then suddenly you got the weird American deformed cousin. Like, <laughs> exactly, like, exactly. Like, uh, yeah, I want to sure. play too. I'm Godzilla too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's, uh, that's Zilla. He's a. Uh, Take my special. hand, child. Take my hand. Oh, shine, shine, oh, shine. That's yeah. That, that, that's actually a pretty good film, actually. Yeah, that was a good choice, Matt. <laughs> yeah, and plus the fact that I want to mention is that at the end, like you see all the different battles, and then suddenly you get the fight with Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla going going out, but then suddenly. Is the ultimate twist and the biggest best battle. It's not really Mecha Godzilla. Now it's Godzilla versus Mecha Kidora. Mecha King Ghidorah. I I think it's Mecha King Ghidorah or just King Ghidorah, but either way. I heard it's like, just King Ghidorah. But either way, it makes either way, it's an awesome twist. And it really makes an exciting battle. So yeah, for me, it would definitely be Godzilla Final Wars. Because it's the grand finale, and you got... It's all of them at once. I guess uh, I'm going to have to put that on my watch list. Yes. Yes. Morgan? Well, I was going to say Godzilla vs. King of Doors is my favorite, and it is, because of the sake of how it feels like more than just a Godzilla movie, but it's an homage to science fiction films as well, like Back to the Future and many others. But considering how that's been already mentioned, I bring another one to the table. Hmm. Terror of Mecha Godzilla. And this is one I actually did see as a kid. Hmm. Between that one and Godzilla vs. Megalon... Uh, Mega Godzilla definitely has a lot more to it. It was the 20th anniversary of Godzilla, and when you consider it, so much time has passed. He was painted as a hero. How do you make him as a villain again? Here's a smart idea: have two Godzillas for the price of one. Oh yeah, that's true. So you have Robozilla and you have the actual Godzilla. Though I feel bad for Angiris what he went through. It's anyway. <laughs> Stop having fun. Um, the thing with Terror of Mega Godzilla is that. It takes a more absurd approach, but yet it's very plausible. Because here you have Godzilla himself, the hero of it all, going up against his former self in the form of a robot. But then the silly portion comes in that nearly kills it, but it still doesn't. Mega Godzilla is being controlled 
by space apes. Yes, you're... Yeah, 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 yeah. And when you kill them, they revert to their true form and commit suicide. Yes, that's right. Like, yes. oh, what was up that scene? He forms into an ape and he jumps off the cruise and he's like, don't ruin my secrets! It, it's weird. But it all makes up for it near the end. We have Godzilla teaming up with another monster to defeat Mega Godzilla. King Caesar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Caesar. Caesar. I always thought it was a weird monster. Number one, it looks like a, it looks like some kind of little puppy dog. It's like Chewbacca made with a pit bull. Yeah, it's like it's like a little pup. Yeah, it's like it's like a cute little doggy, but with big teeth, and you have to sing it to wake it up. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And there's this big explosion when he wakes up. But no, it's so interesting to finally see Godzilla as a villain, but yet going up against his former self, even if it's like an alternative kind of form. And it's truly a crazy, crazy idea, but it's not over the top like the Gamera movies. It plays itself really straight, and I think that's what makes it sort of the runner-up, per se. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good. And then, and then you had the 1954 original, which... Yeah, it will recently... always be awesome. Oh yeah, I recently watched it. The Japanese mm-hmm. version I found was interesting because there was a lot of allegories to the aftermath of war and the H-bomb and having Godzilla being portrayed as this rampaging menace, sort of almost like war tearing up Tokyo. And yet what I found very interesting that no one really connects it to that much, you have a professor character that's working on this bomb that sucks out oxygen out of water. So here you have two different kinds of monsters. You have a creation of science from nuclear fission to the the H-bomb in general, and you have another one who has a weapon that could destroy mankind, and yet, if that falls in the wrong hands, we're done for. And yet he uses it for the thing that mankind created, and as a result, he pretty much just destroys himself, so it's sort of like creation and creature going out at each other. I think, to um, put it bluntly, there is a quote Mark Twain had, which I know sounds strange in terms of connecting it, but it seems weirdly fitting. You see, it was once said, and this is true, that he was said to have been born when Haley's Comet came around, and he always prophesied that... um, Mm -hmm. He 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 would go out with it. And for those who don't know out there in video land... um, he said, and I quote, I came in with Halley's Comet in 1835. It is coming again next year in 1910, and I expect to go out with it. It will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't go out with Halley's Comet. The Almighty has said no doubt. Now here are these two unaccountable freaks. They came in together. They must go out together. And that, my dear friends, is pretty much sums up the ending of the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have one that is a creation of a bomb, another creates a bomb. How do they go out? About both. Together. Exactly. Uh huh. And then another professor phones in the message about how if we use any more bomb testings, other gods will be created. Killing subtlety! And yet. and yet making the point. Hmm. Still, and that, and that's that. Uh, that's kind of why. That's kind of why I, I preferred the original cut because, as it it um, the American cut, cutting that portion out, just made it feel like a rushed ending. Uh, the uh, uh, the speech that the that the professor gives or whoever he is. Anyways, last but not least, James, what is your favorite Godzilla film? Well, currently, <laughs> currently, it it has to be. Currently, it it just has to be the the one that I saw this weekend. Okay, the okay. one that we all saw this weekend. Yes, yep. 
I, I, I was thrilled that we all were going to see this new Godzilla film, which I was like, mm-hmm. this is the first we ever done this, and we actually can review this damn film on this podcast for once. Like, we can review a film for once, and I'm excited. So, before we get into the actual film, oh my god, so, my mm-hmm. experience, my experience with seeing the film is a whole different story. So, uh, I go with my mom, she takes me, and, um, I get my concessions, and, um, it's like, okay, he's like, I, I, will, I, I want popcorn, I want a drink, and all of a sudden, they give me the fucking Amazing Spider-Man 2 cup. <laughs> I was expecting a Godzilla cup at my theater, and I realized later when I come back home that AMC was distributing it out, not my local fucking theaters. Mm-hmm. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It should be available at <laughs> every fucking theater. Cause I come, feel your pain. I mean, I, I wanted it. I even asked, and the guy was like, eh, we don't have them here. Well, crap. <laughs> so, all right, cut to the end of the film. We walk out, and my mom says, I quote, This is the stupidest movie i ever seen in my life. Mm. Did she like it? Apparently not. Well, with my mom, it, it, it's just that she's not really into these kind of movies. She's got her own taste in film. I, oh. I, I, I kind of dragged her to it so I could go see it as long as with all you guys. So I was like, when I first saw the trailer, I was like, Hey mom, I gotta go see it. I gotta go see it. I gotta go see it. Um, Fredzilla, Fredzilla. <laughs> so yeah. Otherwise we can talk about what we thought about the film. I should probably first mention this. Um, last week I was having a really, really crummy week, and knowing that when something bad happens, I want to do at least nice things for people because, you know, share the wealth. I didn't know you were going to see it, Mike. In fact, I didn't know if I had enough. So thanks to my PayPal account, I managed to send some ticket money to Matt and James. So that way ahead of time they were able to be see this film. And it was so, like my birthday. <laughs> so, oh my god, that was awesome. Can, consider this the most expensive cinema royale ever produced. Yes. <laughs> yes. The one that it actually had a budget. Exactly. This is the only one that has a budget. A First 40. Episode... If I remember correctly, oh, considering how much is left in there. How much did you give to them? Um, altogether, including myself, $48. Well, then! <laughs> oh, okay, okay, maybe I should break this down. 11 to Matt, even though we can't money, that's 13. I think 12 went to James, and 18 went to myself. Did you see, like, an IMAX or something? Or... Nah, local cinema. I was a little low and had to get oh, some that's snack money. Pretty... Oh, okay, it was snacks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was covering tickets for you guys, but no. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And thank you. Let's just say yeah, on Friday thanks, my thanks, yes. uh... let's just say on Friday my um <laughs> finances get literally liquidized thanks to bills, but that won't happen next week. So. Good, good. Um, All right. Thank God I went to see it because I would have been lost in the dark when you guys described in the film. Um, so basically we should. S- uh, actually, wait, wait. Before I go do that, my mom gets People Magazine, and of course they have a review of Godzilla. And guess how many stars out of five they review it? Two and a half. Oh, Three? Wait, wait, it's four stars, sorry. How many stars <sighs> out of four do they rate it? Oh, four. Which is weird, like a four star rating, it's weird. But guess, guess what the rate is. Two? Three and a half out of four. Two and a half. Ah, crap. It's got to be one. One and a half out of four stars. What? 
I don't get it. I was reading this review and I'm, and it's like so stupid, and it's and so <clears throat> this Godzilla has the same stomping powers as the classic, plus better effects, but still lacks magic. <clears throat> magic. It? Okay. What magic, magic are you expecting? <clears throat> you can do anything. You mean, you mean, atomic breath wasn't enough? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> you mean yeah, giant right. bug-like monsters were not enough? <clears throat> it's one thing to pay homage to a monster movie classic, the 1954 original Godzilla. It's another to make a reboot that looks like you're still stuck in the 50s. <clears throat> Din waited and slow, this Godzilla plods along in a thin narrative over poorly drawn characters and through giant plot holes only to emerge as something that isn't even in entertaining as a guy in a dinosaur suit stomping around a miniature Tokyo. <clears throat> the actions... And we go in the plot, so we're going to go with the plot here. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. The action starts in 1999 with an accident at a Japanese nuclear plant that turns Joe Brody, Brian Cranston, which I thought he did an awesome performance in this. Uh, from yes. a, he was the best part of the movie, by the way. Um, <clears throat> from, a re from a respected scientist into a raving crackpot. <laughs> Cerns of a cover-up. His son, Ford, who the hell names his kid Ford for crying out loud? That's I do. A, Car fans. That, that's me, not the review. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson, who won't even entertain his father's insane theories until they're, that is, they're arrested near the old nuclear site and something awakens. Yeah, the awakens uh, cliche. Um, what emerges isn't Godzilla. The big guy in the ocean... Oh, the big guy is in the ocean somewhere. Uh, but the new creature is no friend of his, and they were, and there would be a fight. Sadly, that battle isn't long enough to satisfy hardcore fans. Bullshit! Um, and, and the fans dwindle, and the film dwindles getting there. <clears throat> Precious time is lost, sidelining Joe and the sole character with any emotional residence, only to follow the personality free Ford around the globe in a quest to get home to his wife Elle, played by Elizabeth Olsen a gifted actress left to do little more than fret moving a guy around on a map does not uh, does not a plot make nor one lumbering beast fighting another great monster movie to that lumbering point some fans complaining that this Godzilla is too porky I agree, but his diet seems the least of his film's problems. End of review. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is why people... This is why nobody reads People Magazine for the reviews. Yeah. Yes, yes, rip it up, rip it up, rip it up. Rip yes, it up. Yes, yes, yes. Very well. So, uh, the, uh... Thank the you. opinions of that uh, of that poor attention span confused child uh, who wrote that uh, review aside, um, I think there is a point to be made about the pacing in this film, which works. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. it, it does. And it is the same thing. It, it is formulaic, but it is the same thing that has worked that has worked countless times before with uh, with even with Godzilla films. Uh, that is that is waiting. That is putting the audience in suspense. You do not introduce Godzilla five minutes into the film or even or even so much as like just a uh, just in the in the first scene of the movie if you want to create suspense the way that that works is you build up to it you don't get around to the monster until halfway through the film uh that's that's what 
what makes Spielberg movies work so often. Yes. And that's and, uh, why and that's why it was so effective in the very very first Godzilla. In they did the same sort of thing in uh in uh Godzilla 1985. You didn't see you didn't see him until what about 30 minutes into the movie? Um, much thir- yeah, thirty minutes. Even though there have been better, even though there have been better uh, Godzillas made, here it's a whopping halfway through the film. You don't even get to see Godzilla yet, and it works because uh, you want you want to see it so bad. It make this movie makes you want to see it so bad mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. when when. The the new creatures, the Mutos, popped out of that popped out of that giant shell, uh, that that those guys were monitoring. I was I was expecting to see finally see the new Godzilla emerging from that shell. What I got were long tendrils coming out. And I said to myself, oh, hell no, this is not going to be our Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hell no, that's, that's not going to be bro. Godzilla. Hell no. The movie lied. And, well, I, and I said to myself, okay, okay, at, at, yeah, at first I was expecting them to come out, and then this other monster set, comes out, and I'm just like, no, I want to see Godzilla. And then, and and that's why, that's why it works. It plays with your expectations. Mm-hmm. And then you finally get your Godzilla battle halfway through the film, or you no, you like, finally no, get your like uh, your Godzilla appearance. You you get your Godzilla halfway through the film. It is the pan. It is the classic pan up shot that always seems to work. It just does. It just does. The and big then, like, reveal. When you see him, and then he roars, and then everybody goes, Yee-hee! Yeah. Oh, you had that audience too? Yeah. Uh, a bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and as for slow, lumbering, stupid Godzilla, which uh, I believe was part of that criticism, if you have the cut, co- if you have your monster is moving too quickly. Um, this, uh, this is where the, the point of the film that makes it work. Uh, this is what I'm, this is what I'm talking about in scale in, 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 uh, in, in craft. In this particular case, slow movement equals scale. And, I have never, in any time watching a Godzilla film, actually felt as strongly like I was about, like I was seeing something humongous as I did, as I did with this Godzilla movie. If you have a guy in a costume moving around too quickly, it looks like a guy in a costume. A giant, slow-moving creature is intimidating and believable. Yeah, in this film, Mm -hmm. um, Godzilla is the biggest he's ever been. Ever. He's humongous. Like, when I saw him, I was like, Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. That giant roar. Yeah, there was at one point, like, when you see, like, his reveal is, like, literally, like, you see one of those, uh, like, new creatures, and then suddenly you just see his foot as, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, my dude. It's like, it's like, like, it's like, wait, that's oh, his foot? Crap. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, um, well, then. <laughs> um, before we, uh, move on with the film, I just wanted to continue what I was going to say earlier in the podcast about the um, um, something familiar um, with Reign mm-hmm. of Fire. Um, 
Reign of Fire has about the male and female. In this film, the Mutos, which my mother has said, why does it have to be a love story? There's <laughs> there's a love story in this film. So? there's I, I don't know. She sees a lot of films and she just doesn't understand the love in films and so she's i don't and we were talking about it today i was like wait what what what, what love story uh, with the human characters no 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 with the mutos and i'm like oh my god you're right the mutos <laughs> i mean these mutos they are original of course I, I mean i give them props to make an original character instead of bring a character from the past well they are giant bugs but I wouldn't call it, uh, bugs. Uh. I, I, mean, I mean, literally, the way they're designed, you have one that looks like a giant moth-like cockroach, and you have another which looks like a cross between something out of Starship Troopers, but in their own right, they're still yeah. unique and original. Yeah, yeah, you're right, because they took inspiration from Starship Troopers. And, and, and even a good portion of the movie, there's a lot of foreshadowing towards that. When they're in the city, yes. you see like a bunch of insects and stuff. So yeah. to be fair... They build it up pretty, pretty well. Yeah, they do, they do. They build it up awesomely. Um, Maybe they're evil Mothras. Who knows? <laughs> I was going to say the foreshadowing is amazing in it because I noticed something at the beginning of the film. Um, if you look in the kid's room... You noticed that too? That poster, I was looking at it, I was like, wait a minute. Okay, this might be porn later on. And I'm looking at the creature like, wait a minute, that poster is the Muto creature. <laughs> oh my god, I was, I was freaking out. I was like, I finally got something, an Easter egg. I thought you were going to talk about the Mothra cage. Yeah, Mothra too. That Mothra cage yeah. is a nice little subtle hint. Yeah, um, experience. There, there was another Easter egg that you might not know of. Um, I was reading an interview with Gareth Edwards, the director of the film. And he mentions a Easter egg in the film. Um, you know that boat the bomb is on? It was the the whale tours. Mm-hmm. It was it was go whale tours. Um, you know go whale tours. You know go whale. And you know Godzilla is God plus Yura. Oh, Yura mean whale. It's a nice little subtle hint. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Um, but the Mutos save the whales, <laughs> save the whales, blow up the seals, but save the. Wh- Sorry, boo! You stink. <laughs> hey, hey, it, it was Cheech and Chong, man. Just kidding. Um, but I was gonna say the I, I was because the dragons in Reign of Fire they were trying to reproduce. In this film, the Mutos are trying to reproduce. Because they're the last of their kind, and the female is bigger than the female, and they had eggs and blah blah. The blah, blah, female blah. is bigger than the female. Oh, yeah, bigger than the male. Uh, the male. There were male and female. That both females. Oh, fucking moron. Fucking yep, moron. they're they're lesbians that, uh, <laughs> that actually managed to. Uh... Shut, shut up! Shut well, up! Shut up! Well, One's apparently a female. Shut up! Well, shut up. well, they could reproduce asexually. Shut up! <laughs> shut up! Um. I mean, let me go back a bit. The marketing. The amazing lesbian monsters. <laughs> yes! Well, because. Yes! My mom thought it was weird that these freaking monsters were sharing this freaking. <laughs> and they're like. I was looking, I was like, wait a minute, you're right. There's... And so I was watching a review of it, and somebody mentioned it as the, like, monster fucking scene. <laughs> Yeah, with the missile. Yeah, with the missile. So we didn't get any monster funny, but we get we got monster funny and monster fucking at the same time. It's like I thought it was. I I saw like the missile like was like some kind of like like a it's like the monster is giving a flower to it. It's like probably, yeah. You go oh, but, <laughs> and the Mutos are amazing with their reactions because um part of the movie is where um there's the eggs that she buries the nest for and um Ford has to um gets the bomb away but he wants he's like you know what i'm gonna destroy these eggs so he goes in there explodes the eggs the female muto goes like my babies yes my babies my babies (laughs) and then this is the most awesome part she looks at the guy he's like like this on the floor and she's like 
you did this to my babies. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I thought. I was like, did you do this? Who killed my babies? Oh, man. And then Godzilla comes up. I'll save your ass! Yeah, yes! <laughs> that was the best. Oh my god. Yeah. I, 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 saw, I saw him grab the, the mouth and I was like, are you going to do that uh, mouth ripping, you know? Ripping? Yeah, yeah, King Kong. I was like thinking, like, you do that, you do that. But he goes in and goes, Meh. I was like, <laughs> the whole there were... audience applauded at that they were legitimately applying and cheering when they saw that it was the best audience i was with there were two there were uh sorry it was the best audience i was with since the uh back of the future midnight screening the there were two points at at my viewing where the audience applauded that uh one of them was it it was rather beautiful actually earlier on uh, Godzilla defeats the um, uh, the male, no, or is, yeah, the male is the one that that flies. Yep, the male. Yep. Uh, um, it defeats the male. I won't uh, spoil it too much for you guys. Time's up. Uh, time's up. Who haven't heard? <laughs> oh, damn it! But uh, what happened after that was there was a mom. There was a moment of silence, and. Uh, I heard someone at the other end of the theater clap just a little bit. Oh, are you? Are you oh. And then someone, a couple of seats in front of me, started clapping just a little bit. And then I came in and I was like, Oh, no, you did not. Oh. And then. Everybody came in and started clapping. <laughs> it's like it's like the the um cliche. The slow clap. The slow, slow clap. clap. The slow clap. It was that's cool. No, I we don't. Had, t- <laughs> we had the slow clap, but when it came and and that was great. It boiled down, but when it came to the mo- the scene that you're com- talking about, uh-huh, uh-huh. that was instant satisfaction. Everybody was like, and I was like, "Woo!" Oh was, my god! You, I, I did a, I, I howled back, back there. I'm not kidding. You guys are lucky because my screening had no reactions. There was dead silence throughout the whole damn film. No claps, no hoorahs. It was just dead silence, just watching the film. Oh, I know. I was like, "Come on, people!" Usually when I watch a film, I usually talk. Like, I was talking directly to you, so I was like, oh my god, oh my god, yes! Oh my god, yes! So I was, I was talking to myself, basically, throughout the whole damn movie. And my mom was like, hey, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> shut up, edition! <laughs> um, uh, oh, boy. Oh, yeah. This movie, yeah. it really feels like a Godzilla film, and I'm surprised we've barely, barely brought up the Roland, the Roland, the Roland Emmerich film. Cause yeah, it's very, yeah, because uh-huh. um, well, it's yeah. very important to you know consider the history it has because of the fact that it was an attempt at making a Godzilla movie in its own right, but the problem is that it was doing it in the wrong wrong way you see you have the Ronald Emmerich who's well how should I put it this way the 1990s the blockbusters were all about explosions and cool stuff then when Michael Bay was invented blockbusters were about explosion and tits (laughs) true true so in terms of Roland Emmerich's adaptation if you remove Godzilla from the title, it's enjoyable. It's not bad. It's obviously trying to be entertaining. But here's the difference. The new Godzilla is more thought-provoking. It's darker. It's edgier. And it's really going for the stride that was there in the original film. When Godzilla appears, 
he legitimately controls the water. It's like these monsters legitimately like control the weather or Mother Nature in general. And this is something I think I brought up with James before. When he enters in, there's this huge tsunami, and then you first see him. That is sort of like a great representation in a poetic way of a natural disaster that I've never seen in the movie before, not you know since The Descendants. That's so really well done connecting a creature to something like a hurricane is just plain brilliant. And then when he leaves at the end, he leaves tranquil waves. I noticed that at the end, and I thought to myself, wow, Godzilla controls the weather. Okay, bring the sacrificial peanut butter jelly sandwich. <laughs> um, yeah. Fudge controls yeah. the weather. Um, but no, I found it very in- intriguing, and there's less of Godzilla, and I was a little bit annoyed when they kept cutting back to, like, the humans and stuff and you know it, w- it was worth it sitting through all that just to get that one huge finale where it all comes together because that's again that's what a godzilla film is it's about patience it's about developing what is in the universe of godzilla because it was if it was just him there'd be nothing there'd be mm-hmm. legitimately nothing you'd be seeing monsters fighting and that'd be it mm-hmm. here i had a good care of my characters. It was like watching Godzilla vs. Destroya. In fact, I go as far as to say it's a remake of Godzilla vs. Destroya, considering the scorpion-like creatures are somewhat similar to the Mutos in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just does it so well. You're so engaged in these characters. There's the post-incident um, trauma, which they do pretty well. The there's a lot of nice, quiet, and subtle scenes that you know makes it feel like it's the crow of giant monster movies. So, for what it is, I was impressed. This was the first mm-hmm. summer movie I saw. Um, I avoided Neighbors. I avoided Spider-Man 2. I gave good money to see this movie. I went to a Thursday screening. A, a Thursday screening. At Lucky Hall. bastard! <laughs> well, normally it's midnight, but they were doing it earlier around certain places. Um... I gloated in my new episode. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that this is a blockbuster that people should really start um, taking notes about. Because it's really rare to have a very thought-provoking, very smart feature that knows how to give care to its universe, care to its environment, and care to its characters, for crying out loud. The Roland Emmerich movie, on the other hand, it's a straight-up monster movie with Godzilla slap on the title. And... I rewatched it last night just to, you know, see if it holds up, and it's stupid, but it's entertainingly stupid. Mm -hmm. There's dumb characters, there's cliches, it's a throwback to the classic monster films, Godzilla's an Iguanodon, they refer to him as a dinosaur, which doesn't make any sense. And, yeah, it's dumb. It's obviously going on the reins of 1990s pop culture. Good God, the product placement. This is a good drinking game. Every time you see a Sony product, take a shot because guess who? Guess who? Guess who owns TriStar? Sony. It was like Leonard Part Six all over again. So. Oh, even worse. You you have uh, you have product placement that that just pops up right all over the place. Yeah. <sighs> and there's even weird things too, like Mayor Ebert. And his accomplice, Siskel. Yeah, that was pretty much because Siskel and Ebert didn't they like. Gave, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they Roland Emmerich just wanted revenge, but even at that, they failed. Like, even J- Siskel and Ebert, they're like, "What the hell? It just makes no sense." <laughs> there it was just a... because it's just because that the produ- the Roland Emmerich was just pissed off. That's like if Sony Pictures Animation suddenly makes a villain that wears an orange fedora all the time in Hotel Transylvania 2 or something. Yes, but, but here's the thing. <laughs> First off, um, parodying critics is nothing, you know, new or anything. There's mm-hmm. a movie called One Crazy Summer. At the end, they had animated bunny versions of Siskel and Ebert getting blown up because the director had a previous movie called Better Off Dead, which they gave thumbs down to, and as a little nice gesture, he had them as little cute bunnies getting killed off at the end of the movie. In a fun way, in a fun way, not anything mm-hmm. spirited, like like a very nice nod. And if it's like that, fine. In this movie, I'm trying to represent them as characters, but they have little small trademarks that are being connected to Siskel and Ebert, but they don't feel like fully realized Siskel and Ebert 
parodies when you just have one guy saying thumbs up for New York and one guy sort of acting like this advisor. There's nothing Siskel and Ebert about them other than the names, the the, the thumbs. Hell, they don't even sound like them. That, that would be interesting, actually. And that's sort of why this movie doesn't work, because it's attempting certain things and it's failing in areas where it could have improved. But here's the biggie. Hmm. Don't blame Ronald Emmerich for this one, because this was a Michael Cimino case, or if I want to reiterate it better, for all of you moviegoers out there in internet land, this was a United Artists, oh my god, we need a desperate hit case. So what did they do? That makes sense. Hmm. We want a Godzilla trilogy. We want to have a Godzilla movie. The budget for one that we wanted to make was getting higher and higher, so we got to make one that is cheap, efficient, and easy to do. Hmm, who is good at this point? Ooh, this German gay guy. Yes, he is gay, but he's actually okay about it. Hmm, this Ronald Emmer guy who made Independence Day who knows about explosions and blockbusters. We smell a winner. He made Stargate. He made Independence Day. Hire him on. What's that? He wants time and patience no chance get this out in may get it out in may legitimately they rushed the principal photography they rushed the screening it was all studio demand hell they didn't even test screen this thing Mm. you're forgetting to mention something that you told me the other night though that also I'm getting mm-hmm. this, but go on. The fact that also they had Roland Emmick do some rewrites on the draft as well. Mm-hmm. Well, not uh, not what I was going to mention. Okay. Uh, you remember you told me he wasn't really that big on uh, oh, Godzilla to begin with? Yes, yes, that's the other reason. That's the other so, reason. So he could, you know... Just say no to this, right? Hmm. Why didn't he? So I think there is a little bit of blame still on his shoulders. I'd say both, Uh, really. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is nothing new. I mean, Last Action Hero, that was all Sony's fault. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, I like that. Well... To be fair, Arnold Schwarzenegger was behind this, but they had a much more interesting, much darker, unique script, but it kept getting whittled down to make it family-friendly. Hell, the old dude was supposed to be the devil at one point. Hmm. Uh. But, you know, it's a guilty pleasure. I get enjoyed out of it. There's once in a while a nice joke that's kind of half-funny, some of it's weird, like the running gag with the French guy trying to get a cup of coffee. Matthew Broderick. Okay, I don't have anything wrong with him. But every time I see him doing a role, even in The Lion King, he has this highly optimistic attitude in his characters, and it doesn't work. Because he's just being upbeat, and it's not being played off of something. If it's like the cable guy where he's playing off of Jim Carrey's anarchy performance of this crazy, loony TV junkie, that works. That legitimately works. Because he's trying to be calm and collective, and Jim's all like... Blah, 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 blah. It's perfect. It's perfect for Matthew. Because he has this more range of emotion. Here, it's more like, what I think is a lizard that is attacking New York City. It's just... <sighs> Replace him with Kurt Russell. Replace him with... Someone else, please. He, he can't hold a movie on his own, on his own, pretty much. Dennis Quaid would have been better. He was in Dreamscape. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's true. Dennis Quaid. That, that, that's what I was thinking last night. Mm. And even he was in the day after tomorrow. Mm. I guess I'll uh, oh, go on. No, no, that's that's all I have to all say. Right. Um, I'm glad this new movie. Um gave us a good Godzilla movie and yeah Mm -hmm. what I pretty much want to say about Godzilla is that um, what last year is for um, Pacific Rim this year is definitely Godzilla this is one of those you don't really have to think much this is just sit back and enjoy the fun because like I'm not going to say this is the best film 
of the year. But when they did something right, they did it perfect. The pacing, like for the anticipation for Godzilla, it's perfect. Uh, the introduction to new to the new monsters, it's perfect. Revealing Godzilla, perfect. The fights, they are perfect. And I, I'm even surprised to say that even some of the actors are actually really good. I really like Brian Carson, and I really like the um, the Japanese guy who was in Inception. I forgot his name. In but, Watanabe. Uh, yeah, uh, hit yeah hit a hit a wabi. Um, uh, yeah, I liked him too. Um, I'm not gonna say that I enjoyed everything. Um, the guy who played Brian Carson's son, I don't know, like from, from I, Breaking Bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like the son, I didn't really care about. Honestly, I think that's pretty much it. It's like it's it's only his character. Like, I I just didn't really care about him. And, or his family or whatever but like other than that this was one hell of a movie it was uh, it was just awesome mm-hmm. like I, I just love and honestly so yeah this is definitely it's it's a fun this is a major fun summer blockbuster movie mm-hmm. and uh, I'm honestly really glad that they 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 really pull it right yeah it's uh it 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 just delivers it knows when to deliver the thrills and it de- it delivers them it delivers them with promise mm-hmm. indeed mm-hmm. yeah it, it's really all there is to say about it it is there's not much to say about it. i mean if you have not seen it what the hell are you doing stop watching this video and go see it Please. Yeah, I mean, it's like what it's like I said. There's not much to be explained because there's it, not it, much really need to be explained. Exactly. Just sit back and enjoy. Mm-hmm. And if it helps, um, this isn't any new news, but the film itself has already grossed nine ninety three million dollars domestically. Yeah, it's it's Godzilla is storming the box office. It's doing very well. So be, it I gets better. What? It, I wouldn't it, be it, sur- oh, go on. Sorry, you were saying. I wouldn't be surprised. Next month is going to be the Lego Movie to be like the highest domestic box office of the year. Honestly. Well, and, please do. <laughs> and um, if it is of interest, because of Godzilla's success, they have a sequel in the works now. Yay! It gets better. Mm. Want to know what the sequel is going to be focusing on? Monster what Island. Is... How'd you know? It's on Wikipedia. Damn it. Well, with? well, with? from they didn't say what monsters, but they Gareth Edwards was saying quoted that they were trying to evolve Monster Island, and from what I read. It wasn't a confirmed sequel. It was just uh, it, it just in case there is a sequel plan he's going to have. Mm. Though, to quote Edwards when he was at Comic-Con, he said, with the exception of the 1954 original, I would say my second favorite film is Destroy All Monsters. I just mm-hmm. love the idea of a monster island, having a world with these creatures in it. I find that fascinating. would like to treat that realistically. I wouldn't want to limit it to w- one other foe. I think it's more... F- I think it's more fun too. This question would come back to harm if we ever do a sequel. But I think multiple creatures make better movies in terms of the image of Gorgira. Mm-hmm. Even hinted that the kinds of creatures that would be in the movie would include, and I quote, a spider kaiju kind of creature, um, some kind of monster which he dubs a big bad one, and also a report of a mantis kaiju in it as well. Mm. So that's four monsters there: Godzilla, Spider, Mantis, and Big Bad. Though it's rumored to be Hedora, but there's been some dissatisfaction. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's some doubt it could be. I was thinking when I was watching, it was like, by the way, this is another, uh, this is a little nitpick that I also had is that I will admit, I feel like there's not really enough Godzilla in you Godzilla. Too? Everybody's yeah. saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel well. It's like we mostly it's like it's Godzilla. Then he swims, and then at the end Godzilla. Well, and then he swims. <laughs> then he swims. 
No, but that, that's Godzilla! the thing. Like, <laughs> swims. <laughs> and then, like, mostly, um, no, but this is the thing. Like, I want to see more Godzilla. And also, like, I was thinking, it was like, okay, now I want more Godzilla that is going to have more Godzilla. And I want in the third Godzilla to have King Ghidorah. Like, that would be perfect. It's like, I honestly, I honestly think, I, I honestly want King Ghidorah to be in the third Godzilla movie. That would just be perfect for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make it happen, Hollywood. Yep. Make is it, it. What? Is it fair to say that I like this movie better than Pacific Rim? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. It's, it's not gonna. And no, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's the thing. As amazing as Pacific Rim looks, it was hard to get into at times because there's so much setup to the universe. Oh, these giant monsters, these kraken like things are coming from the surface and they've attacked the city. Oh, we've embedded this whole army kind of thing where we have giant robots to fight them, but it takes two people to fight them and they need to be linked through the brain in order to fight them. See the problem here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. No, okay. I absolutely don't. You think it's not overly complex? Godzilla is so simplistic, it's in its own simplistic universe. It's connecting to reality in a way where you could actually not be lost in this whole thing. Pacific Rim, on the other hand, has a lot of setup, they, a they, lot of like, characters. They too overthought much. it. Yeah. I, I think if, you, if it started as a cartoon or maybe a comic book, it would progress better to see where it is. And props mm. to Guillermo del Toro for trying something new. I'm not saying it's bad. All I'm just saying is test it in a different medium before jumping to the next limit. I think Del Toro has good um, has a good head on his shoulders. I just think he needs to organize himself a little better when it comes to projects like this. Pacific Rim you know, had the markings of working and had the markings of being a good blockbuster, but I was just so lost in how much how many things they need to set up, how many things they need to tell, you know, all this overly complex things being told in such a short or long amount of time. Godzilla is so simple, it's so tight, it's so sleek, you're just sitting there and you're literally being engaged in this whole thing. It's like, okay, there's a monster that's been around since nineteen fifty. Okay. There's two other monsters that are attacking the whole thing and they are involved with the destroying of another city okay it's so simple you're just literally engaged to it because it's such a simple premise with pacific rim it's an overstuffed turkey where if you legitimately bite into it it's gonna explode straight into your mouth (laughs) and i love the taste well you do but i didn't think it was like that masterpiece of a flick i just thought it was an okay blockbuster it was like, just, it was just delicious popcorn. That's that's all I thought of it. I can see how people enjoy it. It just depends if people just like to scrape the food out and just eat it. It's just I mean, like I, I mean I, I I don't hate Pacific Rim. I just think there was too much in it. No, no, no I get it, I get it. I mean for something like that you really gotta go like for the standards of Marvel. Set it up with its own universe bit by bit. Don't just take the universe of the Hulk, the universe of Iron Man, all this other stuff, and cram it together. Why do you think the Avengers was a hit? Because they had pacing, build-up, they established the worlds, and they actually had connections between each film, so people had time to understand the establishments. Pacific Rim was legitimately saying, here we have, you know, a three-hour movie, let's cram it into one big thing and see if people can connect with it and that's where I got lost because the setup is so expositionary and quick it's so hard to convey all these different elements at the point you just legitimately need a notepad to connect it with Mm. and by the way I managed to cram in another giant monster movie so Mm. yeah nice nice here's an idea and I've seen it floating around on the internet Pacific Rim and Godzilla crossover. That is something that's been suggested, but Guillermo del Toro has been a little mm, about, and considering his line of projects, I yeah. wouldn't hype for that one. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm not really hyped for it, but I just saw it briefly it, on the internet. 
it, it's not a bad idea. It's just that, as mm-hmm. I said before, he has many priorities. He has another movie coming up. He wants mm-hmm. to do Pinocchio, this and that. Yeah, he yep, has yep. so many projects to do. Like he's pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Um, so I noticed a wait. There was a couple of things I noticed about the new Godzilla film. Um, one is with the casting, and one was with the setting of it. First, the casting. Uh, what is it? Andrew Taylor Johnson, who plays Ford. And Elizabeth Olsen, who plays... L. They're going to be in Avengers Age of... Ultron. Ultron. And they're playing... Uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. They're playing brother and sister. In this film, they're playing husband and wife. Awkward. Chemistry. Romance. (laughs) And um, the setting. Think about this. San Francisco. Elizabeth Olsen is in the movie. Oh, they've invaded Full House. <laughs> Everywhere you went. <laughs> Save the Olsen twins! Save the Olsen twins! Don't no, those... fuck them! Get Bob Saget! No, that's guy. the male and the female, the Olsen twins. That's where yeah. they are now. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is that I was like, okay, Full House of Godzilla, that'll be a great mashup for like the TV intro. And I was so I went on YouTube and somebody made it. <laughs> it's called I think it's called Kaiju House and it's it's like a very rough cut of the Full House music set to Godzilla. It's pretty <laughs> it was pretty cool, but yeah, that was kind of weird. Um, anywho, that yes. should be the. I think we should end this episode de- indefinitely because we talked a shitload of giant monsters and godzilla i don't think there would be a second part i mean there's tons we missed but i don't think we're there's none worth mentioning we didn't even talk about the giant gorilla films oddly enough no not king kong he's not even the king of the monsters no but he did fight it oh yeah king kong versus godzilla they should remake it yeah they gotta they gotta remake king kong versus godzilla Godzilla versus King Kong versus Gamera. Eh, yeah. Hmm. Um, so, <laughs> the funny thing is that the next topic, uh, cut back two weeks ago, Matt signs off early. I tell Morgan and James the next topic. So Matt has no idea what the next topic's going to be. No. <laughs> so... I think we're gonna do a little fun with this one. Oh, Let's pl- we're gonna play a game. It's password. We're gonna give clues of what the next topic is, and you have to guess what topic is gonna be. Oh God, what is it? Okay, is it? Wait. Um. Crap. Just wait, wait, wait. First off, just so everybody knows at home, the password is, um, (laughs) um, we're, we're going to, we're going to take a look at an actor in this filmography. Oh. It's a, it's another one of those episodes. Oh, wait, I know. I think I know. Is it Johnny Depp? No. Oh, crap. Is it, is it a guy actor or is it that girl? It's a guy actor. A guy actor? He's not. He's not a typical he, handsome leading man type of actor. Is he a relatively young actor or an old actor? Old. Old. Older. Jack old. Nicholson. No. Has he won Oscars? He should have. Was he in the Crying Game? Christopher Walken. No. No. Oh, dang. Uh, let's see. An older actor didn't win an Oscar. Um, Tom Hanks? Nope. No. Uh, no, 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 no. He, no, he won a lot of Oscars. Mm-hmm. 
Is he going to be on it in a recent movie? Mm, it's it's all right. Let me explain. This episode's going to be related to the actor somehow, not with a film, but something related to the actor. Something related to the actor. What? It's gonna be. See, it's gonna be out the end of May. It has nothing to do with the um, months and days. It just I had to schedule it so it could fit into our schedule. It it happened at the end of April. Alec Baldwin. I don't know. Oh, good God. I'm trying to think. Sludge. Yeah. Sean Connery. We just. Should we no. just tell him? No, 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 wait, wait. I'll give him the obvious clues. He'll get it. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, give me the obvious. All right, all right. Me... The, the obvious clues. All right. <clears throat> uh, oh, wait, what is, what is, what's his race? He's white. Oh, crap. He's Caucasian, but he's British. Um, uh, Daniel let me... Craig? No. Um, let's see. Um, i trying to think of obvious clues. Um, he was... A video game character, and he played against a anime rabbit. Oh, Bob Hopkins. Yep, Bob Hopkins. He Bob re- Hopkins. Yeah. That's the next episode. He recently passed away in April because of Parkinson's mm-hmm. disease. So we're dedicating the episode to part. Uh, part to pop part. <laughs> to Parkinson's <laughs> disease. Oh, hi, Parkinson's. Pop, pop, pop music. Wow. We're dedicating the episode of Bob Hoskins and his films and kind of take a look back at what he has done, whether it's good, bad, or guilty pleasure for some people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> With that out of the way, I just thought it would be a cool little game. A little something different. <clears throat> this has been Cinema Royale. I'm Mike Mixtape saying long live cinema and go see the new Godzilla film. And if you don't, we will hunt you down and break your legs. We'll smash your kneecaps. Mm, something like that. Shut up now, y'all. See you later, dudes.